U.S. exporters are crying foul as the price of shipping containers spikes. Our Brian Sullivan's in Charleston, South Carolina this morning with an explainer on this latest trade dispute. Hey, Brian. Hey, Carl. Yeah, I'm going to try to explain it. I mean, you guys like to talk about global macro. This is the most global macro of all the stories, and it involves these things behind us. You don't even think about them, but guess what? When you can't buy stuff at the stores, retailers can't get stuff on their shelves, and Peloton can't get new bikes, that's when you start to think about them. All right, in a basic, very basic way, here's what's going on. In a normal year, it would cost, I don't know, 1500 to 2500 to rent one of these things to ship goods from China to Long Beach or Charleston, South Carolina. That's a normal year. Then the container goes inside America, picks up soybeans or bourbon or whatever it is, goes back to the ports, and then is exported to China or other parts of the world. That's how it normally goes. Here's what's happening now. Demand from China is so hot, we are buying so much stuff from China that the container cost guys are now four, five, or even $6,000. And it's so profitable for the shipping companies that they'd rather send the containers back to China empty to basically get back in line, like that taxi driver at LaGuardia, than to put that container on the interior of the United States, which means, guys, that if you want to ship stuff around the world, you're going to either have trouble getting a container or you're going to have to pay a lot more. And it's got exporters crying foul to the point where they are asking the government for help because they want to sell soybeans and bicycles and whatever around the world, and they can't get one of these things. And meantime, the shipping companies are just printing money. It's one of these things that we never thought about until we do. And by the way, almost everything coming into the ports, guys, is tariffed. But China has never sold us more goods at any time in history, and it's really disrupting this. Yeah, uh, trade deficit, we'll, we'll point to that. It's absolutely fascinating, Brian. I guess actionable, who, who are the winners and losers beyond the obvious uh, Maersks and, and, and manufacturers that don't export at all, I guess? Yeah, well, that's so you, you named it, the, the biggest one, Maersk and Hupag Lloyd and some of these, they, they trade overseas markets. Jim probably knows about some of these companies. I did not. Textainer, CAI, Triton International, American companies, TGH, TRTN, uh, CAI, those are the tickers. Look at their stock charts, by the way. They have soared. You've also got some other plays, I would say, an Atlas Air Worldwide, AAWW guys. And again, I'm not recommending, I'm saying they're winning because A, shipping rates are up, container leasing costs are up, and the air carriers, like an Atlas, are printing money because if you need something that's high value, you're going to charter a plane rather than wait months for some of these containers. So those are some of the winners. Jeffries likes names like a Denaus, a Zim International. There's a few like that, guys. Names we normally don't talk about. A Peloton wants to fix this because <laughs> they want to sell you more bikes. Here's the greatest anecdote of all. They've still got Christmas decorations coming into port. The, the lags are so great. <laughs> Yesterday, a shipment of ornaments. I'm not kidding. A shipment of Christmas ornaments that was supposed to be here in November just rolled in. That's the kind of backlog we're talking. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.